Hello everyone, I'm back with another game from the Sunway Sitges Chess Festival. This time with a game from one of the beloved personalities in the chess world, Vasily Ivanchuk. So Ivanchuk is playing with the black pieces here against the Estonian Grandmaster Kaido Kolauts. Kolauts had white and he opened with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop to b5, the Spanish game. Ivanchuk played a6, the Morphe defense. I'm going to go through the opening here quite quickly, as this has been played many times before. So all of these moves have been seen at the top level. Here white played d4, striking in the center, so we have rook to e8 from Ivanchuk, so this allows the bishop to drop back to f8. Sometimes black can take on d4 to try and open up the rook. So here white played the move knight to g5, looking at the weakness on f7. So Ivanchuk played rook back to f8, knight to f3, so with this move, white is signaling that he wants a draw. Ivanchuk doesn't want this and he plays knight to d7. So here white played a4, a very thematic move in the Spanish, trying to open up the a file for the rook. Bishop f6, so now white tries to close the center with d5, knight to e7, a takes b5, here both uh, players trade rooks and knight to a3, attacking the b5 pawn. Black played bishop to a6. We have knight to h2, so maybe hoping to reposition the knight. So note here that the move f4, uh, although it seems tempting, this isn't so good for white, because black would simply take on f4, and this would open up the bishop on f6, and you give the black knight a very juicy square on e5. So f4 would be a mistake here by white. So here Ivanchuk played g6, so this bishop might drop back, enabling a break with f5. So here white played bishop c2, obviously the bishop's not doing much on b3, so it might come around to attack this pawn. So previously this position has also been reached in a game between Anand and Spielman in 1988, and Anand, uh, excuse me, Spielman played the move queen to b7 and the game eventually ended in a draw. But here after bishop c2, we have bishop to g7 from Ivanchuk, so this is actually a new move in the position. So now bishop to d3, attacking this, rook to b8, and queen to e2, putting more pressure. So another interesting idea, instead of queen e2, is to play knight c2, with the intention of blockading with knight to b4. So this takes away any b4 ideas from black, and white doesn't need to worry about b2 potentially becoming a target. So knight c2 is interesting, but here queen to e2 played. So instead of wasting time to defend this pawn, Ivanchuk simply gives it, gives it up with b4. So we have bishop takes a6, b takes a3, b takes a3. So Ivanchuk gave up a pawn and a bishop pair, but here the center is now closed. So that is not such a big deal at the moment. And as compensation, the knight now comes into this nice square on c5. White now dropped the bishop back, bishop c4. It's true that white has a pass a pawn, but the black knight keeps everything on the queen side under control. Also looking at e4. And if anything, these pawns on a3 and c3 are more of a liability. So even here, queen a5 would be a decent idea. But now Ivanchuk decides to break with f5. So we have e takes f5, knight takes f5, and here g4 was played. So maybe not ideal as this now exposes the king and weakens these squares. And this could come back to haunt white. So the knight dropped back, knight h6, knight to f1, both sides maneuver their knights, knight f7, knight g3, and here, bishop to h6 from Ivanchuk. I quite like this move. What this does is it takes away white's control of the f4 square. Bishop takes h6, knight takes h6, rook a1, defending a3, queen to a5, looking here and here, and queen to c2. So Ivanchuk has everything under control on the queen side with this uh, knight and the queen. Therefore, he now switches his attention to the king's side. Knight f7, a5, knight g5, looking at h3 and also maybe looking to come in on f3. 
so king g2. And you can see now that this g4 push has become a problem for white. Rook f8. So there could be some ideas of knight f3 to h4. And then this rook could come in on f3, which would attack c3. So here h4 was played, knight f3 and h5. So that prepares to meet knight h4 with the king to f3. So here a rook to f4 plate, forking bishop and pawn, bishop back to e2, knight h4 check, king to h3, and g5, securing the knight. So here bishop to d1 plate to protect f2 with the queen. And just look at white's pieces, they're all horrible, stuck defending pawns. As Vanchuk's position is so comfortable here that he now makes a few waiting moves just to reach the time control. Queen a6, bishop e2, queen a8, bishop d1, and king g7. So both players have uh, reached the time control. Here, queen to d2 plate, hoping to tie down this rook, because if the rook moves, then there is queen takes g5. So here, queen to a6 plate. Let's look at what Ivanchuk is threatening. Let's say white plays a5, then here, knight e4, and if the knight is taken, queen f1 check followed by queen g2 mate. So black doesn't have, I mean white doesn't have to take the knight on e4. He can play for example bishop e2 to challenge this queen, but here you can take on f2 with check. King h2 and queen c8 looking at this. And the queen might come in to the king's side to join in the attack. So here after queen to a6, White played bishop to e2, trying to chase the queen off this diagonal. Queen to a5 was played. Bishop d1, so black is just stuck to passivity here. Ivanchuk played h6, just protecting g5. While it's true that the light squares around black's king are a bit weak, he does have this knight here on h4, which covers some key squares around the king. Also, any ideas of trying to form a queen bishop battery would simply take up too much time. So here white plate rook to a2, and we have rook to c4 from Ivanchuk, a very nifty move. This just looks at the pawn, and highlights uh, that white can barely move in this position. So here the computer thinks that f3 is the best move, but this looks so inhuman, and it just screams for rook f4 to be played. Note that black cannot take on c3 because this pawn would simply start marching. Let's go back to the game. So after rook to c4, in such a difficult position, it's easy to just crumble under pressure. And this is exactly what happened. Here Kulaut's plate rook to a3. This appears to defend c3, but now rook to d4 from Ivanchuk, taking advantage of this pin, also the undefended queen. And now Ivanchuk regains the pawn. But this does allow white a bit of counterplay. Kulaut's now played bishop to e2, trying to activate with bishop c4, and that would actually trap the rook. So here e4 was played, giving the rook a square. Black does appear to give up this pawn, but it's actually poison. In fact, here white actually took on e4. But now rook to e5 from Ivanchuk skewers knight and bishop. So here if the knight is taken on c5, Queen takes c5, looks at rook and pawn. And this is looking winning for black. So here after rook to e5, the knight retreats, knight g3. And here white plays, uh, black, excuse me, plays knight to e6. So threatening to win a piece with knight to f4. So bishop d1 was played, knight f4 check, king h2. And with two knights around the white king, this is looking lost. Here, queen to d5, threatening mate. So f3, but simply takes on f3 with the knight. And here, Kulauts resign. There is simply no defense for rook to e2 check. If rook to a2, rook e2 check. And if knight takes, then you simply deliver checkmate on g2. So you would have to take with the queen. And here, Queen takes g4, this should be an easy technical win for black. I hope you enjoyed this nice win by Ivanchuk, 
And once again, if you enjoyed the videos, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and have a great day.